Crossroads Media. Oh, man, all I needed them to do was win by one. Was that gorgeous? Absolutely not. You had to deal with a bunch of nonsense, but they won. The Sixers stayed through it, even with adversity. Jason Tatum not getting called for a push-off. That's an embarrassment. And good for Doc Rivers standing up for his team in the postgame. He was very, very annoyed. You know the league is probably going to fine him because they don't like when you take shots at the referees. But that was pathetic. And so was the call on Marcus Smart for a charge. That can't happen. In overtime, that's so massive to have two calls go against you so horrendously like that. So for them to still win and for them to pull one out and hold on after a really horrendous fourth quarter where they get outscored 24-15, to I'm going to take the positives. P.J. Tucker getting in the face of Joel Embiid. P.J. Tucker with a huge and one after getting that offensive rebound. I'm telling you, you shouldn't have been in that position. The fact that the Celtics had the lead late is unacceptable considering where you once were. With that said, though, I'm proud on how they did this. I'm still trying to process it all because the game ended about 10 minutes ago. Joel Embiid was getting beat up by Al Horford. Al Horford had his number down the stretch. But James Harden, a guy who in two straight games looked like he was 76 years old, gives you 47 minutes of excellent ball, including 42 points and another game-winning shot. The three in the corner, nothing but splash And the Wells Fargo Center lost its mind. Lost its mind. Because you could tell that they were on the edge of their seat because the refs were just handing off all these calls to Boston. But keep going. Keep attacking. Do not give up. And PJ's leadership, like that matters. Having your superstars actually compete like superstars, that's number one. But players like P.J. Tucker are at this time of the year and making playoff runs because of how they keep their teammates engaged. Their messages throughout runs. How they handle themselves on the bench. Communication. Remember, Paul Reed not too long ago was getting reamed by P.J. P.J. looks at Joel Embiid, not any different. You're just one of my teammates. So if I have to, get into your face so you hear it. And I have to scream at you, I'm going to do it. And that chatter was big for the mentality of Joel Embiid. Because it mattered that Al Horford constantly made plays against him. And I hate to admit this, but that... That dunk and the drive by Al Horford to slam it and then do that stupid shimmy. Holy fuck was that frustrating. That can't happen. Whenever they get a second chance, it seems to bite you in the ass. They're too talented to give them multiple second chances. So the offensive rebounds that they keep getting... At times, you got to limit this. Maxie's boxing guys out, doesn't even look for where the basketball is, ends up being a foul because he's grabbing them. Maxie shouldn't have as many problems as he has. He did get a good basket, though. I'm saying against this matchup, in this matchup against Boston. I know that there will be rough spots, but I would like to see more through the rough spots. He did have a big bucket in overtime, though. Good design at the top, which gave Maxie the ball, and he can operate using his speed, get to the rack, and lay it up. Doesn't it always feel, whenever they miss layups, DeAnthony Melton, Tobias Harris, here's Boston. They know what to do when another team tries to put it on a platter. 
They force you to overtime and put you in a bind. They take the lead after Jason Tatum can't even buy a damn bucket in the first half. I think he finished one for nine, but he was 0 for his first eight. Then he started to pick it up. Jalen Brown scores 12 points as soon as the ball's tipped, but gets into foul trouble, which when he went to the bench, you take a deep breath and a sigh of relief. The offense got stagnant. I think you saw some fatigue set in. Some guys got tired. George Niang hit some threes, but it wasn't all pretty. Doc only went with eight players off the bench. So no looking at Jan- Jalen McDaniels this time around. DeAnthony Melton, George Niang, and Paul Reed. If you want to say you're uncomfortable with George Niang getting that many minutes, I'm not going to fight you for it. I think Doc just looks at it as his payoff if it is a night where he can make a couple shots and help out with that spacing and really draw some things out. But we need to value that. Because, well, I'm not satisfied with the Jalen McDaniels minutes to this point either. So if he was playing well and he was doing his thing and and could be counted on more, then maybe Niang's minutes would have been chipped at a bit. But sometimes you have to look at the individual and say, well, I I mean, he had three games to this point to try and earn Doc's respect. And Jalen couldn't. So if Niang can make a few threes, you try and grab more minutes. I'm not telling you I fully love the philosophy. I'm just explaining, even though I'm speculating, what I think Doc Rivers was thinking while on the sidelines. But yes, it should have never gotten to that point. No one's going to run away from that. You're absolutely right. The end of the first half, whether it's the two for one by Tyrese Maxey, which that's what he was trying to do. Al Horford hits a three at the end of the half to make it nine points when you should have been in the lead by maybe 14, 15, 16 points. Here's what happened at that massive swing to end the first. Brown misses two free throws. Sixers allow him to rebound his own miss, and then he makes a jump shot. And Bede misses. Brogdon hits a three. Maxie shoots way too early. Air balls. Tatum jumper, Harden three, Horford three. 59 to 50. When you went back into the locker room. Should have had at least 12 points at a minimum lead. Those areas at this time of the year gets picked on. And that's when squads who deserve to be in a larger deficit hang around. It's not rocket science here. Doc stresses it to the team basically all year. Stay within range, and then down the the fourth quarter stretch, let's play better basketball and secure a W. The Celtics, they were the ones to do it today. Thankfully for us, Marcus Smart missed getting the ball out of his hands quick enough. (laughs) Uh, His first attempt, though, at the end of regulation, the ball was in slow motion for me. My heart rate was 8,000. This thing was a motor, man. I could feel my entire body shaking. My wife sitting next to me, too. She's like, oh, my God, I'm going to have a heart attack. Yeah, you're telling me. I mean, she likes sports, but not to the level that we do. She embraces it and supports, especially this time of the year. But she won't lose sleep if they lose. I'll be up until 5 a.m. staring at a damn corner of the wall thinking it's over. Uh, the series is 3-1. You're heading back to Boston. This thing is a disaster. And, of course, the Sixers lose in a Sixers way. That's in the hypothetical that they did lose. That's not how she gets affected. But the fact that she was that effective in overtime and when Marcus Smart shot the basketball to win the game at the end of regulation... I'm like, all right, babe, all right. See, now you get it. Now you get that adrenaline rush. James Harden was giving me adrenaline rushes all afternoon. There was a stretch throughout the second quarter, and I wrote it down because I was just smiling ear to ear, recognizing we got one of those games, and that's what you need if you have any chance. If you have any possibility of winning, this is what you need. Now, Joel stunk in the fourth. 
unfortunately. He didn't have a terrible game prior, but that fourth quarter was terrible. When Joel needed a teammate in game three, nobody decided to be there for him. When Joel needed someone in game four, here's James Harden scoring 42 in almost 50 minutes. Especially when the combo after game three was all about how his legs just don't have it. I wonder what does that mean for six? Because, let's be honest, it probably screams it might be a dud because it takes so much of his body to have a night like this that it's hard for him to recover and do it back to back. I hope I'm wrong. I just need to look at the recent and the now. Put your head down, though, and find other ways. I didn't agree with the broadcast, but one thing they were talking about with Jason Tatum during his 0 for 8 was he's impacting the game in other ways, and I thought that they were stretching it. They made it seem like he was doing 5 billion other things. There were some that stood out, but not enough to give him the ultimate highlight package that they were giving him during the time he couldn't make his shots. I want to note that, though, because if James Harden doesn't have his legs, let's get the rest of the offense going. Okay, it's not me, but I'll make sure it's you. The thing that really stood out, though, was the way he got rolling in that second quarter, mid-range jump shots, the three-point game, getting to the paint and not hesitating, getting to the paint, the ball swings to the corner because the Celtics collapse in, and now the ball swinging so you can get a wide-open look, generating good ball movement so someone else can deliver and knock down a bucket. If he can't score, and maybe he just comes out and he's on fire again. There's a huge shot of adrenaline that James Harden feels on the away floor in the garden, knowing how special it would be to return to Philadelphia up 3-2 with a chance to close out. Maybe the basketball gods throw something into his bloodstream where it is two games in a row that looks sensational and he's not afraid to play his game. But all I'm saying is, if it is one that's rougher, he can't fold. He can't turn Ben Simmons. He went from Ben Simmons to vintage James Harden. I'm proud. That's not easy. The dude was getting destroyed by every outlet. And reasonably so, he stunk up the place. He didn't just come back to the floor, though, and have a decent game. He could have had 20 points, 8 rebounds, and do something that's respected. Instead, he turned back the clocks all the way to Houston, to MVP form, and to grab the basketball in the tightest time down the stretch when the MVP was getting worked by Al Horford. The level of disparity is problematic. Because you don't know which one you're going to get each night. But it shows you the ceiling of this team. And how teams in the past wouldn't win this one. It still may not be enough. And I'm sure there's going to be upset Sixers fans that don't take this with the enjoyment factor. I look at it as all that matters is it's 2-2 to and you're in the TD Garden. I wouldn't want to draw it up this way. But I don't care. You have to win four games. I don't care how you win four games, especially when this team strategically is going to be your toughest task out of every team in the NBA. If you line up every single team in this league, even non-playoff teams, the Boston Celtics would be the ugliest competition for you. 
it would be one of the biggest grinds in the world. There's not another team in the NBA that would give you an uglier matchup. So you can't predict it to be gorgeous. There's legitimate reasons to have concern on wondering if they have the right talent to match up with their guys. And knowing that, just do it. Just do it. Just win. Win by one, win by two. Oh, the Celtics have blown out the Sixers twice, but the Sixers' wins only come from a couple of points. I don't care. What's the series? Two to two. The Celtics are at the top of being favorites by Vegas to win the entire championship, to win the NBA title. This was never going to be easy. If it's by the skin of your teeth, so be it. I'm going to enjoy it. That's what the NBA playoffs is all about, and it's way sweeter when your team grinds the victory. Imagine sitting back and not having any sort of emotional tie to those teams. That's one of those NBA postseason games where you're like, this is, this is incredible. Steph Curry, LeBron James going back and forth. Anthony Davis getting a big block on the defensive end. It's so hectic. Timeouts, challenges are being called. That's what makes the block call that they didn't call a block on Marcus Smart so much more irritating is you're allowed to actually go back and see it. He was moving to his right. He moved as Joel Embiid went up for the layup and he would have went to the line. The Sixers took the lead. That was a damaging moment. Jason Tatum, gross moment. I don't know how they did it because I've seen the organization collapse multiple times in an outing like this one. They can't climb back. They don't throw the haymaker. They didn't miss multiple possessions in a row in the overtime period, and then Boston creates a six-point lead, and everyone's moaning. You need a bucket, we got a bucket. And for that, I'm proud. It's all about expectation and what you expected. This is literally forming into a series that I envisioned. Very awkward. A lot of displeasure. Some leads that get erased way quicker than you would like. Maxi not being the Maxi that we need. It's not good enough at the end of the day, but you're being carried by others. Tobias getting lost at times, but then being recognizable at times. Missing some layups. Got to throw that in there. And PJ being the voice and making hustle, effort, game-changing style of plays happen. The and one, also making the free throw. It's going just as I thought it would. 2-2, back to Boston. I saw this going the distance. It would be nice. If magic could happen in TD. Did you all believe that this would be a night that they just ran away after the first half and you didn't have to sweat it out? Come on. It would have been lovely. It just wasn't in the cards. All right. Let's uh, let's talk to you out there. Oh, did I even talk about the James Harden second quarter thing I wrote? He hit a three, hit a mid-range block, uh, (laughs) hit a mid-range shot, had a huge block on the defensive end. He came up with a couple of those plays where James gets a steal and the Sixers move out in transition. He was doing it all over the floor. He hit a floater, he hit another mid-range, and then he hit a three. And in that second, man, you could tell he was locked and loaded. It was a night that he could... 
really make up for the flaws that happened in games two and three. Unreal. Unreal. Okay. Let's rock your calls. Here we go. I don't care that they won. I don't care. You were up by 16. You went to overtime and had to hope that Marcus Smart didn't get it off. No. No. Enjoy the last win that we were going to receive in this series. See you, birds. Not what I wanted to hear. Not what I wanted to hear. I don't know. I don't know how others watch their events, how they embrace playoff runs. It wasn't the most pleasurable finish. It was. It was. But it wasn't. I acknowledge that. These games play out so differently every time they play. If it was always about the previous outing, then how come this wasn't another blowout for Boston? Well, Jason Tatum didn't have it. What if Jason Tatum had it? Well, what if James Harden had it in game three? That's part of this. Well, what if Jalen Brown didn't pick up a foul? He he did pick up early fouls. He might not pick up early fouls in game five. Maybe the refs in game five call a push off. Maybe there's a charge that they know what they're looking at. And the Sixers get the advantage. But they keep going. And they win on the road. And Embiid has answers to Al Horford's aggressiveness defensively. Doc Rivers touched on how much they went to the tape. And they had a very important locker room setting to approach their film. Tough conversation, real dialogue. To get a W and to force the Celtics to play a different way and to get up in their grill to tie up the series. And that's exactly what happened. I think it's important because Joel Embiid knows that can't happen again, knows he should win that matchup against Al Horford. We'll probably see another film session to recognize what they did, collapse on Embiid, bring that second body. PJ let him knew mid-game. Now you can digest it, get to the adjustment factor, and possibly the ending of Game 5 changes because of it. You don't always have the luxury of a second swing. You could pop up in foul territory and they catch it, or you watch the first baseman run to foul territory. Is it going out? Is it going out? Is it going out? Oh, I went to the third stance, the third row of stance. Okay, you could breathe. You get a second pitch here. That's how I want Embiid to view a fourth quarter stretch in game five. Game four, you popped it up foul, but it went to the stance. Game five would be another crack. And players like Embiid don't do this very often. It happens. Tatum's a star in this league. He couldn't buy anything. He looked terrible and didn't in the second half. Embiid, that was his time to be off. He hasn't played basketball in how long? He's going to be tired. I'm not taking shots at the conditioning thing. I hate when some Sixers fans go down that road. I'm not saying, oh, he's never read shit. That's not what I'm saying. Doesn't matter if you're Joel Embiid, if you're Marcus Smart, if you're Tobias Harris, if you're Al Horford. You're off for a bunch of weeks, and then you're thrown into the fire in playoff basketball. Your endurance will be affected, especially when you're in the 45th, 46th minute of the game. And oh yeah, there's overtime too. 
which he did find Harden in the corner. Harden, great job keeping possession of that basketball as it was a little to the left of him, but he snagged it, he put it into his pocket, and it was so pretty, so gorgeous out of his hands. I could read it perfectly from my couch. You know when it'll be wet. You know when it's perfect. And at the edge of his fingertips, it smelled like a Sixers bang, bang, three. Love a nice bang, bang, George Niang. But, of course, it was James Harden delivering. All right, back to the phones. Wow, Rhodes, that game, honestly, it ain't a Philadelphia sports game without making us sweat a little bit or too much for the game. But nonetheless, the Sixers get a monumental win. We could get that same Sixers performance from the first three quarters um, for most of the game going on. We can we can do a lot of damage. We can. We can. That's what this league comes down to. This isn't a new discussion. So you're saying, and I agree completely with the beginning of, of appreciating the fact that they secured. Let's not harp on all the negatives. Survive in advance. That's the motto in March Madness. Virginia can win round one by one point. They could play a team in round two, let's say Michigan State, and win by 14. They could see a different team. And, and yes, it's different matchups, different schools, different sizes you're playing against. It's not exactly the same. Tatum, Brown, Derek White, Marcus Smart. The matchup is a problem. And you're seeing them for seven games. You're not switching to the OKC Thunder in game two. And then flying to Chicago to see the Chicago... uh, Not Bears, not Cubs, Bulls. Survive in advance. Game three looked different than game four did. You're right, though. James Harden playing on real. You can beat the Celtics. That's your ceiling. Two times now. Two times James said, we are going to win this basketball game. I won't allow a loss. They're 2-0. and When James can't find the ocean, they're 0-2. James Harden is the X Factor. And this is all happening with an eh Tyrese Maxey. With not the best version of Tobias Harris, especially on the offensive side of the floor. With an up and down bench. Seriously. That's what's been happening. You're not getting a out of body experience from anyone else. Maybe DeAnthony Melton in game one, but that was without Joel Embiid. And that wasn't an out-of-body experience. He does that once in a while. That's a part of the DeAnthony Melton experience. Once in a blue moon, he flirts in one of those offensive outrageous games. It's just fantastic for us that that happened on a day where Joel Embiid had a knee problem and didn't take the court. James has this franchise in the palm of his hands. And it's always hard for others to get established when James is out of touch. Think in football. If your offensive line is getting toasted, your quarterback doesn't have time to find his receivers. If Devontae Smith can't get the football, but your offensive line is getting torched and the other team has seven sacks, am I supposed to get angry with Devontae Smith? If, if Tobias Harris killed you inside because he stunk in game three, but James Harden, who runs the entire offense, can't get out of his own way and turns into Ben Simmons, Tobias can't do anything then. How? How can Devontae do something at the O-line, which starts your offense's motor if they stink? I guess you could counter with, well, even when James does ball out, those players still had rough ones. And yeah, that's that's true. That's true. 
I guess that's just more for the reaction of it wasn't just James that was bad in game three. Others were. He's the most important because he makes more of an impact. So I really hope that he can do this in two straight, but it's it's hard for me to put blind faith into it. And Bede's quote here, I was terrible tonight. I got to be better. I will be better. Man, I love that from the big fella. Bro, Tyrone is right. Dr. J is a hater. He's a hater. <laughs> what a nail biter tonight. Let's go, Sixers. We got these boys. Let's go. Good. I love it. That's beautiful. That's fantastic. And for anyone unfamiliar with what he said, we feel, and and Tyrone's been pushing this narrative for a while, that Dr. J, or we call him Mr. J because we don't want to give him the respect of doctor, uh, despises Joel Embiid, doesn't like Joel Embiid, doesn't like that he's getting the recognition and all the uh, the, 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 the public love for being the best that we've seen skill set wise and he puts on a fake front the doctor in the building I don't think he loves it I don't think he loves it he does just feel like a hater but anyway I'm just as excited as that guy was screaming at the top of my lungs when they won this game and we'll see what happens in five Just find a way. That's all it is. Survive and advance. Thank you, guys.